Welcome to Crashing with Friends. My name is Kyle Hobbs, your host. This week I'm joined by Connor Hobbs. What's up? And Jackson Brayman. Howdy. Well, it's just us this week. No guests. I wasn't feeling the best, so I didn't feel like doing an episode in the studio. So, just doing it from home. Shut the studio down. Shutting it down. How's your guys' week been? Start with you, Connor. Actually, let me ask you this, Connor. Uh, what's that? Um, how have you been expressing yourself lately? <laughs> Through video games. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it, yeah. Okay. That's, that's the path I've chosen, yeah. Right. So mainly I've been playing a lot of uh, Legend of Zelda this week. So really just getting back to basics. Uh, went went back to a link between worlds on the th- uh 3ds, but I've got a 2ds, so I'm playing it on that. But uh, just really having fun with that. I beat the first three dungeons already and got the master sword on that. And then I've been watching the Edge Runner anime show on Netflix. I finished it. It was pretty good. Yeah. So I downloaded um Cyberpunk 2077 on PC and just started playing that i've got like two hours in so just really basic stuff on that but that that game is pretty fun don't really intend on finishing it i just kind of want to play it a little bit but um yeah just having a good time playing games um watching lord of the rings still um haven't finished the latest episode yet so probably gonna finish that at some point um yeah been pretty good nothing crazy has happened didn't really golf much i think i maybe golf one time this week so nothing crazy but i had a good time yeah i kind of took the wind out of my sails golfing as far as having that 120 dollar price tag to do the tournament kind of took the wind out of my sails as far as yeah (laughs) wanting to play nonstop. like i don't mind playing maybe once during the week and maybe on the weekend but i'm not gonna go two days in a row or three days in a row it's like yeah, because it's like, at a certain point, it's like, what am I even doing out there, you know? It's like, I'm mainly out there to have fun with my friends and throw some discs, so if I'm just going out there by myself all the time or whatever, trying to get good, then it's like, why am I trying to get so good, like, you know? Right. Unless you intend on going pro or something, you know? Yeah. Um, what was your idea for, a, like, a, just a friends tournament, you were saying? Oh yeah, since we since we uh, aren't going to be playing it, I was thinking about just asking all of our friends if they wanted to play a little tournament with us. It's like a small five dollar buy in, and then have like different divisions for different levels of how good we are, because some aren't on the same level as others. So you kind of want to separate people that way they have a chance of getting some money out of it. So yeah. I think it'd be fun. Maybe do a few weekends in a row. Yeah. Give it, give it some more gravitas. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Unfortunately, it is going to get colder pretty quick. So, yeah, but that'd be the perfect time because it's been so hot lately. So that is true. September is usually pretty, pretty ch- like good at the end of September, beginning of October. Then, like later October, it starts getting really cold. Yeah. Did you do anything else this week? Mm. Man, not really. Nothing nothing cool, nothing crazy. Yeah, that's it. Cool. I wish I had more. I wish I was cooler. It's okay, <laughs> man. You're you're cool enough. <laughs> <laughs> I wish my beard would grow in all the way. That's what it, like that's the thing this this week is like, yeah, my beard is coming in more, but it's not enough. It's not enough. All right. I know Jackson. what you mean, man. I got this. Is all I can grow is the freaking goatee. So I wish I can get like a full beard going. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we, my, we can't we, all be beautiful with the full beard, you know. 
yeah. But uh, my week's been all right. Uh, mainly just been sitting at home, watching movies and playing video games. Like, just playing the same old stuff. Like, nothing really new to report. Mm. I mean, I'd say my highlight of the week was watching the Chiefs and Chargers play on Amazon Prime. That was probably my high, like highlight. So, yeah, a lot of problems on that Amazon broadcast. Did you guys find any problems with it? No. Yeah, I yeah. didn't have. Yeah, I didn't have any problems. Mine kept uh, buffering a lot. Hmm. You got to buff. Yeah. That kept sucks. coming in all freaking blocky. The Chiefs really squeaked by. <laughs> yeah, they did. We got lucky. Kind of sucks that that kind of game happened, but it's like, well, it was a short week. You know, we don't know what happened after that first game, so whatever. So uh, I ended up finishing the Hobbit movies, and did one of you guys finish the third Hobbit movie? No. No. Just no? the first two. Well, there's this CGI character in the third movie, and I think I've told you guys this before, but... This dwarf in the third movie is completely CGI and he's a main character. He's like the main dude's like cousin or something. He comes in with his army and for some reason he's CGI and it's the worst CGI you've ever seen, dude. It's like the whole time he's fake. And then for like a two and a half second shot of him, like getting close, he like, okay, really it's like, it's like a half a second shot. Of him hugging him. It's like just the back and it's like a wig. You can see like the red wig. But dude, when I watch that again, it's like, oh yeah, that's why this movie sucks. Like it's a great like in my opinion, I think it's a good movie, but the reason why it sucks is because of some of that bad CGI. But you just gotta pretend like it's not there. So I I would recommend at least watching give it all another shot, is what I'm saying. Cause the if you only watch the first two you don't even get to see what happens to the to Smaug. Smaug? <laughs> to Smaug. Oh. Because he, he uh he doesn't die in the second one. I don't know if you guys remember that part, but he doesn't die in the second one. No. Nah. The, him... the second one like ends with him like leaving. He's like, watch me. I'm gonna go fuck these people up. Yeah. So And the third one begins with the battle at that village. So like the first like twenty minutes is that all that fire destroying that village and then what happens to Smaug? Sure. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, I might need I, to go back and watch those because I'm I'm really digging that Rings of Power show. So there's like a there's like a subplot with uh, the wizards and like Sauron, like and the elves. Yeah, the wizard. Or whatever is that his name, the brown wizard, or or is that the guy that's captured? I know there's a wizard named Radagast. Yeah, well, it's if that's the brown wizard, then that's probably right. Yeah, yeah then Sauron or Saruman gets involved, and then the elves get involved, and they find out that like Sauron is trying to come back, and it's like this whole other thing. So it's pretty cool. And then you got a whole Legolas subplot with him and this other like girl elf that's in love with the dwarf, which I wasn't too crazy about. But I don't know. They've got to fit a romance story in there, I guess, is the whole thing, you know? Yeah, they also got to fit an Orlando Bloom in there as well. Oh, yeah. Got to feature him, which he has some cool parts. I'd check it out. Okay. Maybe give it that, that one more shot, you know? Okay. And that's it. What about you, Kyle? How was your week? That was pretty good. Um, started playing a game called Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Uh, I'm about an hour into that. Um, it's not too long of a game. It's an old 1992 um, LucasArts adventure game. But supposedly it has one of the best Indiana Jones stories. And so far I was liking it. It's a pretty funny game so far. What were you guys thinking? I was laughing, having a good time watching it. I thought it was all right. 
I was just kind of like getting like really confused with like, man, what in the world is going on with this game? <laughs> like, I was just like, what? I was like, I was trying to, I was just bewildered. I was like, this game exists. Okay. Because <laughs> I had never heard of it. And so I was just like, what is going on in this game? I was like, I need help with the puzzles. I was like, you need help with the whole game to figure it out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so you've but, never but, yeah, seen they... one of those adventure games? No, I've never oh. played one. So huh. They were super popular in the early 90s and stuff. There's a ton of them. Like Grim, I've never, yeah, Jackson. Like Grim Fandango, but, Full Throttle. Yeah, I never played any of those. Yeah, I feel like if I would have played this game as a kid, I would have gotten it. I would have gotten maybe like an hour or two in and been completely lost and probably never have picked it back up. Or if we went on the game FAQs. That's true. That's probably what we would have done. That's usually what we did. Follow a walk. Follow the entire walkthrough on there because you wouldn't know anything. Yeah, you're right. Um, Like Connor, I've been watching that Cyberpunk 2077 Edge Runner show. It's really cool. It's got a lot of hardcore blood and like fighting scenes that I like. Um, kind of like Ghost in the Shell wise stuff like that. I, I'm not the biggest fan of anime, like uh, Naruto, that kind of anime. You know, it's like mm-hmm. um, really wild expressions and then like a teardrop will pop over their head or for some reason their whole face will get red because they're mad and then they'll uh-huh. have like a checkerboard thing on their f- cheek or forehead. You know what I'm saying? And right. So, I don't like that kind yeah. of anime. I like like realistic, more realistic type of anime. But that... Still, that Cyberpunk 2077 Edge Runner sh- show is not realistic at all, but it's really cool. Um, the art style is really awesome. The, the ability that the main character has in the show is really cool to see the way they did that. Um, but so far, I'm liking the story a lot. It's like Connor. It's like it's making me actually want to go back in and play Cyberpunk 2077. So I went ahead and re-downloaded it on my PlayStation 5 and my PC. <laughs> plan on actually re-downloading that too once I get done playing Guardians and Fallout 4. Yeah. But yeah, I'm yeah, also... That show, that show, they feature the Gorilla Arms and the uh, Mantis Blades quite a bit, so you're like, man, I kind of want to run around punching people and cutting people yeah. up with those. I never even got that far in the game to be able to use that stuff. Yeah. And yeah. There's also that to- like... There's also that nano wire, or it's, it might be called mono wire or something like that. It's that what that chick uses, and then there's that like rocket that you can shoot out of your arm or something. Yeah, there's like a lot of like arm stuff that you can get, then like a bunch of leg stuff you can get too. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I never got far in that game because I started playing that game like early on when it first came out, and my game hit a glitch where, like early on in the game, there's like and attack helicopter gunner scene and there's like a it's moment a flashback like, yeah it's a flashback but it's basically like you just keep going around in circles until you kill everybody that's around well once you've done that it's supposed to land but it doesn't it just mm-hmm. keeps going around in circles and i'm like bro what is going on so i can never get past that part and it's like very early on Mm-hmm. Like, I can't remember if it's like, I don't know, after like the whole opening of the game or what, but yeah, it pissed me off. It's frustrating. So frustrating. Yeah. I am because whenever I was playing it, when it came out of launch, I also experienced a ton of bugs. So I am looking forward to replaying it and seeing how the game is supposed to be played. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also watch, uh, watching She-Hulk. I'm fully caught up on that. Have you guys watched any of that at all? I have not. To be honest, I'm not like mega interested in it. But you just have to watch it because it's actually funny. It's it's a comedy, so it's it's really good. I recommend it. It's it's totally different Marvel show than anything you've seen. But I recommend it. It's really good. I look forward to it every week. Um, I tend to not see the fault in a lot of these Marvel shows. I just watch it because I love this kind of stuff. 
you're a total synth for most synth like superhero <laughs> stuff. But hey, I'm kind of there with like, you. I've, I've heard I've heard that it is a lot different, so that's what makes me want to watch it. But if I ever hear that another show is kind of like, you know, that Captain America show or some of the other ones that just weren't that good, it's just like, ah, uh, I don't know. Kind of like, kind of like to the point where I, I don't really want to watch all of them, you know? It's kind of weird. So you've got maybe a little bit of Marvel fatigue? Yeah. I think it's... so, for sure. Especially their shows. Like, their movies, like, some of them, I still want to go to the theaters early to see them, but, like, this last Thor movie, I haven't even watched it, so... It's... I don't know. It's... Even some of the movies, like... Yeah. They're losing me. They're losing me hard. Enjoyed it, but I didn't think it was as good as Ragnarok. No. Ragnarok Rag... is awesome. Ragnarok is totally different level. Um... And I also am still playing that Guardians of the Galaxy game. Um, I am almost at the end. I probably could have beaten it today if I really would have tried. But by the next episode of the podcast, I will have beaten it for sure. That game is, like I said last week, still really good. Really funny. Really sad at some, sad at some points. But I really enjoy it. Um, it does a really good, it does a great job of engaging you, you know, and getting you invested in all of the characters. Right. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, another thing I've been checking out this week is this band called Dead Poet Society. Have you heard of them, Jack? I've not heard of... I think I've actually heard of the band, but I do not remember at all what they sound like. Well, the only thing I remember is the movie, Robin Williams' Rest in Peace. Yeah, there's a movie, Dead Poets Society, with a plural in the middle of that. But... It's a it's it's a pretty good band. They sound like um, Royal Blood, but it's one of those bands where they all went to college together for music, and when they got out, or, or you know, they made a band during that. And when they got out, they just started making music, and it's pretty well done. Um, but like I said, it sounds like Royal Blood, which is up my alley. But they started in 2013, and I I recommend them. Give them give them a listen. Um, nice. I'll have to check them out. There's like a new band I started listening to as well called like it's called Vane.fm. And they're like a they're definitely a hardcore band, but they kind of have like small like elements of like deaf tones a bit. Like they're definitely a like hardcore metalcore band. And it's just nice to get like these small hints of like very nice sounding vocals like mixed in with the heaviness but yeah they like one thing i really like about them is like something i've been really digging in metal music is just how chonky it is you know like i've been getting really into the chon 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 stuff like that and this band does a really good job of that stuff so check out vein.fm if you're into any kind of metal music okay if you're looking for a new candy (laughs) check out haribo berry clouds more delicious than they look, and they look delicious. <laughs> Get them while they're hot. Nice. <laughs> Can I just say, I want those very much. <laughs> oh. I want them. Connor's been talking about candy for like the past 48 hours. No, Connor talks about candy pretty much all the time. <laughs> no, he, he does, but he's been really laying thick on the candy for like the past 48 hours we've been playing I've games. Been, I've been... I've been overhyping a lot of the things that I've been eating. Saying I was going to like eat a bunch of ice cream and pie and stuff last night and, and candy. I didn't eat half that stuff. What did you end up eating? Half that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. I don't want to get into the details, man. Now, Jackson, you had a little Jackson's Quest for us this week. A Jackson Quest? A Jackson's Quest. What's your quest, Jack? Oh, I wouldn't really say it as much as it... Ah, I wouldn't say it's so much a quest, but... I would say, like, a, okay, so we got that Winnie the Pooh... Uh, What's it called again? Winnie oh, the Pooh Blood, Blood and, and Honey? Honey. Yes. 
Okay, so we got that movie coming out. What's like some other like stuff from our childhood that we could turn into like a horror movie? Like I came, I came up with a bunch. I don't know about you guys. The uh, you guys want to hear the one that I was thinking of? Sure. All right, so you take the show Gola Gola Island, and now the what is it? <laughs> what is the mascot? Is it a frog or? Yeah. yeah, you take the frog, and now it is a carnivorous meat eater, like wanting to like kill all the children and everyone in there. It starts the show starts off with like the adult that's like in charge gets brutally eaten in front of them and they get trapped inside the house and it's just got you know freaking you know <laughs> gola gola nematode dude is just outside waiting and wait yeah just ready to destroy anything that he sees okay what's his weapon he just kills people by strangling them with his tongue or oh man I mean yeah he's got that he like just eats you alive as well but yeah, that ton is a that ton's a very powerful weapon of his. I would imagine his jumping abilities probably would be too. Yeah. You're really into Gullah Gullah Island, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Mainly, I got the, the theme song stuck in my head as a kid, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gullah Gullah Island. Gullah Gullah. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 what about you, Connor? Let's hear your ideas. So I got a few of them. Um, angry beavers. Okay. That could be something very dark. It could be like a creature film that's like they're they're just coming, they're killing, they're terrorizing a town, destroying everybody. You know, I think that'd be a great one. I can envision one I, of the scenes them sneaking up on some girl and gnawing her feet off while she's standing there before she even has time. Or they, they have time to realize what's happened. Uh-huh. Or like they uh like the movie starts out with like a, a group of campers arriving somewhere and then like they're crossing a bridge, you know, like uh, like a dammed up creek, and then they look at the bridge and it's like a bunch of arms and legs and stuff. You know? It's like, oh shit, this this bridge is a the bodies, uh they're making a dam of bodies. And then the dam breaks because the beavers break the dam. And then they trap the kids. And then they're they're trying to escape. I don't know. I think that would be cool. Um, well, as, as told by <laughs> Ginger. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You keep going, man. Okay. So as, as told, told by Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I want to see that girl like have to survive some sort of a horror uh whatever scenario you know but uh i think th- there's a few obvious ones like danny phantom did you guys think of that one okay how would you do that one uh, this uh kind of like paranormal activity or something or like mixed with some stuff from like insidious or you know like just kind of mix a lot of those ghost stuff but the best parts of all of them and then just kind of make like a this dude trying to trap all these ghosts you know not only that, you could take it to her like all the bad guys in Danny Phantom do some fucked up shit, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, like really lay waste to towns and stuff like that. And at the end of the episode, it's just like, all oh, these people massacred. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he always shows up like a minute or two after the person gets killed or something, you know? Or like the person's already dead and the spirit's possessing their body, moving their corpse around and shit, you know? I think that'd be pretty yeah. cool. Uh, God, I had a few others. Uh, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. You know, age them up to where they're not kids, or leave them as kids and make them go through some crazy shit. Like, either way, it'd be, it'd be a crazy movie. So they're basically the Winchester boys. They've been killing people their whole lives. They've seen, they've seen, they've had a death with them the whole time. Yeah, they've seen some maybe shit. something. Maybe something happens at the beginning and then death is after them and they got to survive some crazy shit the whole movie. It's almost like a Final yeah. Destination kind of movie. Yeah. You could flip it around to where they go from working for them to have to run from them. Okay. Uh, 
Clifford, Another one. The... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Clifford, Clifford, the big red dog. He could be a giant dog that is just, you know, luring kids in with its lovableness and then eats them. Some sort of a giant, like, ga- uh, kaiju type thing. Yeah. You know? I was about to say the same thing. Kaiju. They got to <laughs> send in the, the military planes and all that. <laughs> we make a shot for shot remake of Cloverfield, but just replace Clover <laughs> with Clifford. <laughs> Oh, I love that, man. That That'd could be, be good. Um, my life as a teenage robot, it could be kind of like uh, uh, RoboCop, but even darker, you know? This teenage girl, she's at her cheerleading squad. She does the flip, gets hit with an RPG in midair. Terrorist attack. Has to get a whole new body, you know? Yep. Now she's a teenage robot, and she's out for revenge. Because apparently works. there's a terror there's a terrorist cell in her neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking tried to kill her. <laughs> All right, I've got one. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. All right. So wild thornberries. Oh, love it. Basically, you just take all of the wit out of the show like anything that's smart about the family and just make them stupid and the whole (laughs) show is exactly why you don't fuck with animals in the wild and every episode (laughs) is different animals eating them alive but basically it's like okay today we're gonna go out and look for a snake the snake's a freaking anaconda snake eats darwin (laughs) (laughs) okay Today we're going to find some antelope. Antelope freaking skewers someone on their he- head or whatever. I don't know. Okay. Antelope. Wait, just make it super, make it metal luckless style, you know? <laughs> now help me here. How do we turn Madeline into a horror movie? What do we do with Madeline? What do we do with Madeline? Do we make it like, I don't an, know. like an attack the block type situation? After I watched Higurashi, everything just turns to like, ah, oh, they just get murdered. So, <laughs> Madeline, I mean, there's a few ways you could do it. If you want to do a creature thing, like attack the block, I'm, that would definitely work. You know, they're all chilling at school, something happens, and then they got to defend themselves, you know? Yeah, for sure. One by one, they get picked off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, they've got our umbrellas. Until all that's left is Mrs. Clavel and Madeline back to back. Mm hmm. They both got 9mm pistols. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't know. I would, go, I would go more ghost theme for Madeline personally. Okay. Yeah, definitely make it horror, you know. A lot of spirits are possessing the school of former students that have died there, you know, because all the teachers are killers and stuff like that. You know, she's got to go through all of them, kind of like bosses, all of her school schedule, like math and science. She's got to use she has to use science to defeat science in some crazy mystical way and all that. But, yeah, that's kind of the route I would go. Okay, Jackson, how would you how would you go with Madeline Horror? Like I said, everyone just gets murdered. It just turns into a different murder every time. A, ba- a basic murder show, okay. I would just make it. To, I don't. I would. I would just make it to where like Madeline is just the happy go like happy go lucky gal that's always like she's always just a ray of sunshine, and everything around her is just death constantly. Like it's just crazy accidents always happening. Like mailman that's like walking by her at the same time gets a piano dropped on him from a roof or some shit so what it's we... just yeah. I don't oh, know. yeah i so, like that so what do we call this madeline show <laughs> we, we'll call it madeline but we'll put a little dash after mad <laughs> <laughs> or we could put mad in parentheses or some shit <laughs> in red yeah there you go 
we'll just highlight the mad with red. Yeah. We'll put a little splatter of blood on the M or some shit. And be like, It'll be we dripping. Let them know we're not fucking around. End. Okay. I like it. Perfect. And Connor, what'd you what'd you have for us today? Uh, I was just thinking it'd be fun if we kind of highlighted some weird stuff that we either like or have liked in the past and just be like maybe like one movie, TV show, game, just kind of kind of just go through a bunch of different genres of things and medias, I guess. So just kind of what what's been striking your fancy? Is something popping for you? What's going on? Let's hear about it. What exactly do you mean by weird, though? Like, something that is just, like, so stupid that, like, man, I can't believe I like this? Or? It could be... It could just be weird that maybe it's, like, you know, so old or something, or it could just be, like, just an odd thing, or it's good because it's weird, you know? Like, for instance, uh, if we wanted to start with, like, maybe, um, like, say, movies... Like, it's probably an obvious one, but, like, Beetlejuice is a movie that I like that's really weird, but not everybody has seen it. And I think since Halloween is coming up, or at least that time of year, I think it'd be cool if, you know, people that haven't seen it, they should go check that movie out. Okay. Something like that, you know, it's just, it's a weird movie, you know, but it's, it's worth it, you know? Okay, I've got a perfect one for you. This movie is... A movie that is just so freaking random and has no purpose, but I still enjoy it and will probably rewatch it at some point. It's a movie called Rubber. It's about a killer tire. Okay, yeah, I remember you talking about that. Not to be confused with Flubber. Not to be no, not no. with Robin Williams, rest in peace. No. <laughs> um. Why no, do you love the movie? Like, why do I like the movie? Just because it was just... As far as the acting in it, the acting was solid. And I felt like the way it was written, I was like, okay, I'm drawn into what's going on. But like as I was watching the movie, the entire time I was just trying to figure out what exactly is happening within this movie. But they tell you right at the very beginning of the movie what the whole movie is about. And it's just an homage to... Uh, what? How does he des- describe it? Is like no reason is what he says. He's like this whole movie is an homage to no reason. He's like, why does a, why does like a man and woman fall in love in a movie? He's just like, eh, no reason. Just ends up happening. He like lists several exe- examples before he's just like, this movie is made for no reason. And yeah, everything that happens doesn't. Yeah, has no reason to it. Yeah, check out Rubber. It's sem- It's more dark comedy than anything, but I feel like it's one of those movies that at the end of it, you're like, okay, I watched it. I didn't hate the time that I invested into that movie. That's kind of how I felt. I was very surprised. Like, by, okay, I did not hate that movie about a killer tire. Oh, yeah. I, I hope they make another one, to tell you the truth. <laughs> If they were to make a second rubber movie, I would watch it. What, what would the subtitle it? be? Yeah. <laughs> uh, rubber up. <laughs> I don't know. Rubber reinflated. Would... Yeah. <laughs> Retreaded. Yeah. <laughs> rubber to redemption. <laughs> Flat fixed. Um, another one i kind of had i know i was just saying one of each but it's just a bionicle mask of light you remember that movie kyle yeah of course turns out you can watch it on youtube really so if you guys feel like watching an old bionicle movie sometime and just being like oh yeah these things check it out i remember those from my childhood (laughs) <laughs> that was like when they didn't quite get computer graphics just right yet it looks surprisingly good for its time 
Nothing's moving super fast by any means, but it looks decent. Anybody have any other movies? Yeah, I like Spider Man Three. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Call me. Weird. I like Spider Man. I like Spider Man Three as well. I like it. It's just not near as good as some of the other Spider Man movies that are out there. Says you. Yeah. I think it's just as good as the rest of them. Really? You're gonna I'll... say you're gonna put Spider Man Three and Far From Home like right next to each other? You're gonna do that? Far from home is on a different level. Far from oh, home. Oh, is... yeah. You're now right. dig on this. Dig, dig on this. What? Yeah. Now dig on this. Oh, I thought you. <laughs> I thought you were gonna come in. All right. I thought you were gonna come in with something after that. Like now dig <laughs> no. on this. No, no. That's just, me <laughs> so, that's just me saying that I'm supporting Spider-Man Three in my own way. That's me expressing myself. Um, another one I had was um, that movie before your or the, not movie that video game before your eyes. That is a weird ass game, and nobody I've talked to has played it. I've recommended it to everybody, but no one's played it. Um, if you have Netflix, it is on. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Netflix has games now. So all you got to do is ty- push the games thing at the bottom of the screen when you have Netflix open on your phone and it takes you to the Netflix app store which is just the Play Store but it says like all these games say um, Netflix into the breach or Netflix before your eyes so you can play before your eyes on your phone now and just use your your camera on there that's equally the one of the best stories I've ever played and one of the saddest games I've ever played but I recommend that a lot, and that's a weird ass game. All right. Well, you said it, games. I got two games. Okay. First one, Metal Gear Solid: Rising Revengeance. Yeah, that game. Is that good. is, that is such a weird game, but it is so good. It's like one of the better like action hack and slash games that I played in a long time. It came out on the 360, but it's always on sale. You can probably get it for like a dollar or two sometimes. Like I think I I saw it on sale for like it was like maybe maybe five dollars or so, maybe less. What so did it's, you say it's the always, game was called? Metal Gear Solid: Rising Revengeance. It's the one that's all about um, God Raiden or something like that. I think it's his name. Yeah, that's right. Raiden or Raiden, one of the two, however you pronounce it. Um, but it's so good. He's like even more cyborg than he is in like Metal Gear Solid Four. So it's it's a really cool game. Uh, Jackson, are you gonna play it? Um, maybe, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> All right, so that's I a might. maybe for Jack. That's a maybe. And then uh, the other one that I always think of for some reason, man, it always comes back to me. The Bugs Life video game for Nintendo 64, man. I don't know. Do you ever think about that weird game, Kyle? Yeah, I think about the, the part where you're being chased by that bird and you're holding on to that dandelion thing. Flying and stuff? Yeah, I remember that scene really well. And, like, picking up berries and throwing those around and grabbing seeds and throwing those and stuff. And, like, yeah... There's so much about that game. We played the crap out of that game for some reason, man. Yeah. I don't know why. We just kept reading But we it. did. Yeah, we liked it. We really liked it. Had a good time with it. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like weird games that I've played back like <laughs> I think playing Power Wash Simulator and completing it 100% is kind of weird. That is weird. Another weird game <laughs> is uh inside oh yes i had that in my head a little while ago i don't know why i didn't say that it's mainly the ending to that game is what makes it insanely weird no spoilers but yeah that game is that game is phenomenal i'll give that game a 10 out of 10 as far as platformers go and just like limbo is good as well yeah that's on my list too i need to play that Another game that I've been really wanting to play is uh, Little Nightmares 1 and 2. 
I have those. You have both of them? I think I have the first one. I know I have the first one. I don't know if I have the second one or not. Yeah, I I see like a lot of good stuff about the first one, but I see even better stuff about the second one. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely want to play both those games at some point because I love a lot of horror games. As long as the horror game is fun, then I'll play it. But there's some games like uh, Visage. That game, I played it because I wanted a game like PT, but this game wasn't really what I was looking for so much. Yeah, I wish there was more crazy stuff happening. But, yeah. Um, I had a TV show, so I watched the show called The Strain for a while. Did you guys watch that show? I never watched it, no. The vampire show, right? Yeah, it was on FX. It was like a Guillermo, a Guillermo del Toro show. I think he like produced it or something. But it was a vampire show. But what made it really weird was the vampires, at some point, they would lose their penis. Like, all their genitalia would fall off. And Hell at, yeah. <laughs> at one point, there's this scene. Where there's this rocker guy. He's part of a, like, he's like a lead singer of a band. He gets bit by one of the vampires. And then, like, a, a couple weeks later, he's sitting there taking a pee, and then you hear, like, a bloop. And, yep, his penis falls off into the freaking toilet. And it was just, like, it was the show was almost too weird, and we ended up stop watching it. I, it went weird places, and I wasn't digging it. Did he still have to pee? No. Once no you have a vampire, pee. all you need is blood. You know? Huh. Yeah. Yeah, that would That's... suck to be a vampire if you ended up losing your penis. Yeah. <laughs> Still can play video games. I thought I thought vampires fucked, bro. Not these vampires. <laughs> like, I've, I've seen Village of the Damned. I thought they got it on, bro. So if their penis falls off, does their butthole seal up? Yeah. There's a, very gra- there's a really graphic scene where you clearly see a butthole seal up. Really? <laughs> no. No. I was gonna say this show sounds insane, man. <laughs> this deal's getting better all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, spread your cheeks. We're gonna see the butthole seal. <laughs> <laughs> Stick this pencil in there. All right. Uh, Kyle said TV show, so I've got JoJo's bizarre adventure for them anime fans out there. If you want to see some weird anime. That's also good, really good. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is for you. Check that out. It is weird. And then the Venture Brothers, man, for TV shows, it's one of the better shows I've seen that nobody ever talks about. And I feel that is like one of the higher quality cartoon shows that was on Adult Swim that really should have been popular, you know? It was fun. For a lot of reasons. Can you say the name of the show one more time? I'm sorry. The Venture Brothers. Yes, Adventure but Adventure Brothers is great. I really need to watch all of that show. I've enjoyed yeah. like almost every episode that I have watched. So Yeah, it, it's worth it. It like it goes places. It definitely develops all the characters, makes you invested in what happens in the story. And uh most of the time I was laughing, having a good time with it. So I can't rem- I can't recommend it any more than than I am right now, which is highly Recommend it more. You should watch that show. <laughs> Jax, I watched that show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, mine, uh, as far as weird TV shows go, uh, Documental on Amazon. Documental is a show all about, like, I think it's, um, I think it's Japan. I might be wrong, but I'm very sure that it's Japan. You think oh, Japan? Yeah, it's a documental pits 10 comedians against each other. Um, the objective is to make each other laugh in a locked room. Mm. And I think they have like six hours to make each other laugh. Um, each contestant has to bring like 1 million yen as a participation fee. Okay. And the last person in the room without laughing wins. And the winner is awarded 10 million as the prize. Right. Uh, they, the show keeps evolving throughout each season. But they have got some way weird humor 
in Japan as far as like their comedy scene goes. Like, I saw some weird stuff on this show, like what they're doing to try to make each other laugh. Like showing each other their but, buttholes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Man. Oh man. There's like another one, like they were I forgot they were doing something with their penises and I was like, what is going on here? And like the guy that was like does the intro like he basically hosts the show. He's like doing the intro for the show and he was like Amazon could told us or basically told us we could do whatever we want. It's like as long as we just don't zoom in on like a penis or something like that, as long as we don't zoom in on it, they said, No, we're fine. But it turns out they censor a lot of that stuff. They censored a lot of it because there's no way that they would just let that, that, that show go the way it goes. But yeah, check out Documental, Amazon Prime, multiple seasons of it. So even For though what? even though they're not allowed to zoom in on the genitals and the balls and stuff, are you zooming in on it, Jackson? There's nothing to zoom in on it, man. There's, they, like I said, they censor it. No, I think I think you're zooming in on it. Oh, I just remember what they were doing. They were like taking vacuum cleaners and like, like sucking it up. Oh, and, like, and one dude like apparently like it got like a good suction on him, and so he was like, "I." <laughs> like, there's like a whole that part did make me laugh. Not gonna lie. Did they count that as him laughing? Uh, him yelping out in pain. Yeah. No. It, okay. Good. <laughs> Yeah, so that's my show. Uh, do you got anything else that we want to call out for being weird that we enjoyed? I mean, I could probably go on forever about the bad 1990s sci-fi like original horror movies I watched as a kid. But I don't want to take up hours of you guys' time with all that. It's probably for the best, Jackson. Yeah, there's quite a bit. All right, so I figured we could uh, go through the nominees for the Toy of the Year Hall of Fame. Have you guys ever looked into that? Like every year they submit no. uh, a list of these toys to the Strong Museum. And basically, like past years, I think Sand was in there. Yeah. So, basically, I had a list here, and I was wanting you guys to tell me if any of these are good, and they th you think they should go into the Strong Museum. So, okay. the list goes like this. So, this year, Bingo is on the list. Boo! Yeah. Wait, what is on the list? Bingo? Bingo, yeah. It's not a toy. No, that's Let's not a toy. A paper. Yeah. So, we hate you, Bingo. Hey, get out of here. Go have fun with old people somewhere where we're not around. <laughs> Go rot away in an old people's home, you <laughs> stupid bingo. Go turn into like a bookmark in a book somewhere. We don't want you around. Nobody with a fun personality is like, yo, let's play bingo. <laughs> No one on a Friday night is going out, having a steak dinner, and then saying, let's go play bingo at home. Right. Nobody's doing it. Nobody out there is going to want to drop ecstasy, listen to Daft Punk's Discovery <laughs> album all the way through, and at the end of it, think, dude, bingo would hit the spot. <laughs> so the other ones on the list are Briar Horses. Do you guys know what that is? Briar horses? Yeah. Couldn't tell you. Oh, okay. Yeah, my cousin, she had a bunch of these things. But no, I wouldn't add these onto. But then again, I don't like. I don't even know what's in the Hall of Fame. I don't know what's made the Hall of Fame. I don't know what's already in. These are just a basic horse toy action figure. Yeah. yeah that, that. Fine. They're yeah. super old. Girls love them. They should be in the Hall of Fame. So yeah, yeah exactly. go for it. Found, founded yeah. in 1950, Chicago, Illinois. That's how old these things are. Yeah, pretty go old. For it. Uh, Catan. You guys ever heard of Catan? No. Let's. 
Settlers, See my Adam Temple again. Settlers of Catan. It's an old board game. Bo Catan? Yeah, Bo Catan. Yeah. No, Settlers of Catan. Um, supposedly one of the best. Yeah, I've never even heard of that. It's supposedly it's one of it the looks better. Like, it, 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 it looks like Risk. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, Light Bright. Is being Light a- Bright. Yep. I understand that one. I don't need to look that one up. But yeah, Light Bright needs Light Bright needs to come back. Yeah. Is that your superhero persona, Jackson? He Light needs, Bright. He needs a Light Bright on him. Yeah, to submit. Project the powers. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you moved on without me even saying anything about Master or the Sellers of Catan. Um, looking at this thing, I think it looks pretty cool. I like all the the hexagon shapes, so I'd say put it in there. Yeah. I think I have a copy of that game on PC. For some huh. reason. Yeah. Cool. Um, what was the one after Catan? Light Bright. Light Bright. I'm gonna say no to Light Bright. I don't think it's accessible to a lot of people. So I think you throw Light Bright in there. It's a classic toy. Um, I mean, they're just not getting to a basic horse, and you're wanting to put an advanced toy like a Light Bright in there. True. Um, the next one here is Masters of the Universe. So that would be He Man and She Ra, those classic toys. Yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? Okay. Nerf toys, which I don't know how Nerf toys isn't already in there, but I feel like that needs a spot. No guns. No guns. No guns. Okay. Um, pinata. You guys imagine that was- that, is that as a toy? I mean, I, I guess. I don't consider a pinata a toy. I consider that a, a birthday game. Right. And candy pops Or a celebration a yeah. celebration of some sort. That's Makes not a toy. Sense. Yeah, I don't know Shit, how. I mean, they might as well say like those little popper things that you throw on the ground and they go, they pop. They might as well say those are toys, but those are fireworks. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, mean, a, a pinata yeah. is made out of cardboard, right? Somewhat, yeah. Enough said. Why don't they just Paper, say cardboard, cardboard is the best? Why don't they just say cardboard? <laughs> well, cardboard is the best. Um, the next one here is Phase 10. Either of you guys play Phase 10? Isn't that a Have card you? game? Yeah, it's a card game. I played it in school a lot. About actually, Phase 9. It's pretty fun, actually. Phase 9, not as good. Yeah, I'll, I'll skip on Phase 10. I'll skip Phase 10, too, as because... Far as they- as far as a toy hall of fame. Um, the next one here is Pound Puppies. Do you guys remember those? Pound Puppies? Pound Puppies. Nah. Oh, these things. Uh, sure, go ahead. Yeah, throw it in. Yeah, um, I like the look of that. I could lay my head on that. The next one is called Racco. The classic Rock'em or Rack'em and Scorecard game. Looks completely boring. You guys ever seen Racco? I've not heard no. of most, like how do you spell that? These toys. I've not heard of a lot of this. How stuff. do you spell Racco? Rack, and then there's a dash O. Oh. Racco. I'll pass on you, Racco. Yep, it's completely boring. Um, the next one here is a Spirograph. You guys remember what Spirographs are? They're those cool stencils that you put your um, mm. you put your pen in there and it makes like crazy designs from the stencil and it just, you make it go in a circle and stuff like that. Okay. I would, as, I would count this as a toy and something to use to be used for art and stuff. So I, I think it's a fun toy. Yeah. Yeah. I remember thinking those are so cool when I was a kid. I wish I would have had this box, deluxe box set. Yeah. <laughs> make some cool, make some cool flower-looking things. Oh yeah, mandalas or whatever. And then the last one on there is the basic top. Ooh, how is the Bay top blades. not already in there? Give it to the top, bro. Give it to the top. Yeah, 
and get it in there. Let Bane it rip. Blade came from the top. <laughs> Bane blades. <laughs> and that's the list. So well, out of all those, the top should be going in. The top, yeah, I the agree. Top, the top gave us Beyblades for one, and and then also like the dreidel is that's a that's a big thing in the Jewish community. I think the dreidel and it's, it's a pretty religious much the symbol. Top. Yeah, throw the top in there. I bet that's the reason why the top isn't in the Hall of Fame already is because they're being prejudiced towards the Jewish community. You think so? And stop with your hatred. Let the top in. <laughs> Let the top in. Let the top inside you. And uh, just to throw like a, an extra little bit on there, the name top. Like, how good is that name? It's pretty good. It's not at the bottom of names. It's yep. not a bottom. It's the top. <laughs> top. Love it. Yep. Love it. So that's the list, guys. Now, over the last like maybe week, for whatever reason, all these uh, like Sony, Nintendo, Ubisoft, um, uh, Activision, they all just for whatever reason decided, hey, this week's going to be E3 Part 2. So I know Connor watched a lot of these presentations. Jack, did you watch any of them? Not really. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna go down the list of the the games that were announced at pretty much E3 Part Two over the last week, and we'll talk about them a little bit. If you guys have any words to say about them, cool. If not, we'll just go on to the next one. Um. So D23, which is Disney's like event they do every year. Um. There's only a couple games in there that I thought were worthwhile. The first one was Tron Identity. Did you guys see that at all? I did not, but I'm very interested in that. Yeah, I didn't really see much on that. I think I I think I did see it, but I can't remember it. It's like a visual novel almost. But it follows um a detective named Query who is tasked with solving the mystery of an unprecedented crime. And that comes out in 2023. So it looks like Disney is about to release or start working on that Jared Leto Tron movie. So they're probably like, all right, let's get some Tron content out there. Tron's still big, you know. Uh, I got a feeling that the new Tron is not going to do good because of Jared, Jared Leto. Think so? Jared Leto has been stinking. So that's what I gotta say. Like, You're trying to like say you don't best. like Morbius? I haven't even watched. I have zero desire to watch Morbius. To tell you the truth, it's Morbin time, Jack. I don't, I don't give a shit what time it is. I'm not. I'm never gonna watch that movie. Probably. I don't care if someone even tells me, like, dude, that movie was actually pretty good. I'd be like, I don't give a shit. I'm, I was someone that was actually really like stoked that he was getting to play Joker, and I bet. His Joker probably could have been good in like the director's cut of that movie if they would have let him do it. But yeah, at the same time, it's just everything he's done since then has just been kind of like thinking cheese, you know, not into it. Okay. Um, the next one was Marvel's Midnight Suns. It's the next game from the guys at For uh, Games. They're the guys who made XCOM one and two. Connor, what do you think about that game? Uh, it looks all right. I I was wanting to play it, and I'm I'm kind of just not even caring as much as I was. But I mean, I'm sure it'll do well for that community. So yeah, yeah, I'm sure, sure it'll be good. Just the fact that it's a card based RPG kind of takes me out of it. I don't like the yeah. card based randomness. You know, yeah, it doesn't sound like something I would be into either. Yeah, it's a strategy game, so you can move your characters around the map, but then when you get in combat, it's like, hey, here's random cards that hopefully you get a good roll. Um, and that comes out on December 2nd. The other, the, the last game that they showed off that I thought was any, anything worthwhile was Amy Hennig's new Captain America Black Panther game. They, all they showed was pretty much a teaser. They didn't show any gameplay. But that looks cool. It's pretty much... T'Challa's grandfather with Captain America. 
And it's supposed to be like a. It's Amy Hennig is the one that made like the first couple Uncharted games. So I have a feeling this game's going to be pretty theatrical and pretty over the top. Is that supposed to be like set like during the beginning of Captain America? It's supposed to be set like during in World War II. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think it'll be cool once we see some footage on it. But yeah, just the, the teaser was cool, but it wasn't any gameplay, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, the next thing was the Ubisoft Forward. That was honestly pretty boring. Did you watch any of that, Connor? Yeah, I, I'm stoked for Assassin's Creed Mirage, but aside from that, I'm not really too hyped for anything. The yeah. whole um, Japan one might be cool, but it was just a little teaser. So that's pretty much it. it was Assassin's Creed Mirage, which Assassin's Creed Mirage, it looks like it's going to go back to the old, the old Assassin's Creed's. Less RPG, more assassination, more hiding, sneaking, that kind of stuff. And then the other one Connor was talking about is Codename Red. And that one takes place during Feudal Japan. And you'll play a very powerful shinobi fantasy. But my thing is, man, it's like Ghost of Tsushima already came out. Like, do we really need that game? A lot of games are taking place in feudal Japan, but they're also being developed in Japan, so that's part of it. Right. Now, the next one was the Nintendo Direct. That one had a couple bangers in it. Um, the first one I saw was Fire Emblem Engage. No, I Engage. Liked, I haven't played any of the newer Fire Emblem games. You have three houses, don't you, Connor? The newest one? Yeah. Did you play very much of that? I played some. I've thought about going back, but I haven't yet. Yeah, Fire Emblem is just a really good strategy strategy game. Um, not really much more to say there. The next one was Crisis Core: Final Fantasy VII Reunion, and that one comes out on December thirteenth, twenty twenty two. You pretty stuck psyched about that one, Connor? Yeah, I'm stoked. I'll play it again. It was a good game. And that's Had fun a- with it. That's a prequel to Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Hopefully it's good, but it looks like it's just pretty much the same game that was on PSP. Just some yeah. updated visuals. Um, now this next one here, they're, they announced that they're adding more N64 games to the Switch through their online Switch service or whatever. And two of them I thought Jackson would like was uh, Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium 2. Are oh, of course. To, are coming to Switch. Same with Mario Party, Mario Party 2, and Mario Party 3. And 1080 Snowboarding and Excite Bike 64. Those Pokemon Stadium games are only good if they allow you to use your Pokemon from blue, red, gold, silver, all those games. Because oh, that's, that's the only way you can... That is the only way you can beat the Elite Four in Pokemon Stadium 2. So, huh. it's impossible to beat them. And that's the only way those games are good, huh? I mean, if you want to beat the Elite Four, I mean, it sucks like playing Pokemon Stadium 2 and just playing that game for months and months and months trying to beat the Elite Four and it never happens because you don't have, you know, you don't have the Pokemon to do it. Right. You got to have your own leveled up Pokemon. That's literally the only way you can complete that game. And that's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like it. The next one here is Octopath Traveler 2. That one comes out February 24th, 2023. Connor, did you, were you ever interested in the first one? I've got it downloaded on my, PS, or on my PC because it's free on Xbox right now. So, um, yeah. I'm going to play it eventually. Those games haven't have... had the desire to play it yet. Right. Those games have a really, really cool art style. It's like 2D slash 3D. <laughs> Um, the next one here, that the last thing they showed was Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which is the sequel to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Connor, give us some thoughts about that. Uh, seems like it's going to be the darker version compared to Breath of the Wild, which a lot of people are excited about. I know I'm excited about. Usually those ones are pretty good, the darker Zelda games. So uh, definitely excited. Um 
a lot of the mechanics seem similar to Breath of the Wild, but new. Uh, so interested to see what happens there. And as far as the story, who knows what's going to happen? Some bad guy is going to launch a bunch of the chunks of Hyrule up into the air and going to be a lot of aerial stuff in this next game. So pretty stoked about that. Let's hope yeah. they bring dungeons back. Yeah, I want I want at least seven dungeons in a Zelda game minimum. The better ones usually have like three and then you get the Master Sword then you have like another like seven once you have the Master Sword. So anywhere between seven to ten dungeons is, is good with me. Right. Four dungeons that aren't really that good of dungeons doesn't really cut it. Because those Sacred Beasts, like they were like the like two of them are super easy then two of them are a little bit harder but they're still not that great you know right in my opinion and that comes out on may 12th 2023 and the next event was the sony state of play event and that started off with tekken 8 being revealed for ps5 jackson did you ever play tekken yeah played uh the the old ones on like the original playstation tekken 2 is my favorite of them but okay yeah this new one they showed it, they were showing so many particle effects going on, like crazy. It looked so good. Um, very good. Yeah. Very good, yeah. Uh, they showed a new trailer for God of War Ragnarok. And that comes so out. excited for that. Yep. That comes out on November 9th. That, that game that game's going to be crazy. Yeah, it just keeps on looking better and better. They showed this crazy scene where... Atreus fires an arrow into the sky and the wolves chase it. And when the wolves are chasing it, the sky goes from like night to dark or whatever, or day, day to night or whatever. It's so cool looking. Like, I guess from the, th- um, the lore, once the wolves get to it, that's when Ragnarok starts. Which is pretty cool. If you like Norse mythology. Combat looks awesome. Um, they showed a really cool scene where Thor threw his hammer at Kratos, and Kratos threw his Stormbreaker at him, and they com- they collided in midair. It was really cool looking. They showed like a really cool looking space like jellyfish thing that was really sick looking. Um, really cool looking game. Hopefully, it lives up to the hype. I bet it will. Let's hope so. I might actually play God of War again before that game comes out so I can get myself psyched up for it again. Right. Are you going to get the second one on PS4? (laughs) Maybe. Yeah. And that's it, guys. That's all the E3 stuff. Let's move into Yo Dude Check This Out. He wants to get us started. Uh, So, Yo Dude Check This Out. There are these um, temporary tattoos that are being developed, or excuse me, not temporary. Uh, well, there are temporary ones, but they're permanent tattoos that are being developed that um, you you can just like stick them onto your skin, kind of like a Band-Aid. And the ink is like made to where it's like a micro needle and it'll like pierce your skin and dissolve in your skin. And it, the people are saying that they don't want to like replace traditional like tattoo artists and what they do and everything. It's mainly for like medical patients that want to get things tattooed on their bodies, but don't want the pain of a normal tattoo. Um, Or like if they want to have like something where it's like a UV tattoo or some like special thing or whatever, but it's pretty cool. Like you can get like anything, um, but just as like a a strip that you just stick to your skin and let dissolve and boom, you got a tattoo. That's wild, man. Yeah. Yeah. The whole micro needle thing was kind of like, wow, that's crazy. That is wild, huh? Um, yo, do check this out. So there's people all across the country right now spending seventy five thousand dollars to grow three to four inches. Have you guys seen anything about this? <laughs> yeah, like having their legs expanded. Yeah, all of a sudden over the last week, I've seen like three or four different articles on different websites about people talking about this. So Kyle, basic- Kyle, 
I'm getting that surgery. Oh, I'm shit. coming for you, bro. Oh no! I'll be just as tall. No, but yeah, you're I'm getting a get... special four inch surgery. Nice, dude. <laughs> but the thing is, you get lengthened in your legs. So yeah. when you don't have clothes on, you look like a freaking freak because your legs are super freaking long, dude. Yeah. Meanwhile, your torso looks the same. But supposedly, um, it takes quite a while for everything to heal. It's um, your femurs, right? Don't they cut your femurs? Yeah, they break both of your femurs. And Ugh. adjustable metal <laughs> nails are inserted down into the centers of your bones. Each nail is made out of titanium, which is both flexible and sturdy, like bone, and about the size of a piccolo. The nails will be, will be extended one millimeter every day for about 90 days via a magnetic remote control. Once the bones heal, boom. You're three to four inches taller. But it takes it takes a long time, and your bones can be really weak, and you'll be susceptible to your legs just breaking during that healing process. So you pretty much <laughs> have to take it easy and not do anything. That's so stupid. It's crazy, isn't it? It's stupid. How bad do you want to be in the NBA, Kyle? <laughs> Real what, bad. What gets me is you're not just stretching your bone. You're stretching your skin, you're stretching the muscles, tendons, veins. Everything you're stretching yeah. all of that, so that's stretching why you all, yeah. that's why you do it in millimeters, and <laughs> not inches per day. You know what I'm saying? Dang. Oh yeah. God. Oh, that would hurt so bad. You want three inches? Pow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder if I could do that with my arms. Just get. I want to be able to have like my fingers like touch the ground like whenever I'm fully standing. Just yeah. have like crazy gorilla type arms. <laughs> yeah, wanna, give me give me something like that. Try to extend every bone in your body. Do that that same surgery, but to every bone. Just see how long you can get. You know, <laughs> get the long man. Yep. See it. I'll become the real slender man. <laughs> I'll just go out Sl- to the woods and hang out all the time. Slender Jack, man. Slender Jack. Hey, yo, Slender Jack. <laughs> Did you have a yo, dude, Jack? Bruh. I had dude. one, but I have lost it. It's okay, man. And do you guys yeah. have... Do you guys I've have, lost it. <laughs> do you guys have any words of wisdom for us? Uh, what words of wisdom? Um, no. Oh, come on, I'm Jack. Uh, okay. I'm stupid today. I can't think of anything smart. So, uh, yeah, consider consider meal prepping in the future. That might help you accomplish more in the time you have off, and give you more time in the time that you need. So, meal prepping is going to save you time and optimize everything that you need in your life, at least for lunch, maybe breakfast. Might be able to work in dinner if you're really crazy about meal prep when you get get the hang of it. All right. And what, when you do, let me know how good it is because I'm not doing that. <laughs> I need I need to get on that. Right. Meal prep. Get on that. Well, I don't like right. reheated food. Meal prep well, you, don't work for me because I don't like making a meal and then like I want to eat this not right now. Some other point when it's not fresh in front of me. It it could be a meal prep where it's like a cold thing where you leave it cold, you know. Yeah. Or it could be as simple as just like making two sandwiches for like two days lunch and then like make you know a few other things that are like snack wise or something. That way you're just set up, you know. At least for a little bit. It's good wisdom, Connor. Yeah. Uh, what, what's that? What's that cold salad? Uh, the noodle salad. Is that what's that? Uh, what's that salad called? Pasta salad. Pasta salad. Everybody, go out and get you some pasta salad today. Okay. The healthiest salad you could ever have. 
<laughs> oh, good. So, and after you're done with that salad, go and have a lasagna salad. <laughs> and then when you're done with that, get yourself a mac and cheese salad. <laughs> oh. I'm about to go have myself a cheeseburger salad in a little bit. That's good, man. I, I love one uh, of those. Uh, All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for crashing with friends. Um, if you guys watch this show on YouTube or Spotify, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can get notified whenever the episodes pop up. Uh, otherwise, you guys have anything else? No. Nah. Let's end this. Let's end this. Let's end it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hope you guys have a good rest of your week, and we'll see you guys all next week. All right. Bye. Later. Bye. <laughs> Desire. Crashing with friends. Podcast.